Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Bloodline Heroes of Lethas. For today, we have some patch notes to look over, an event schedule, and I'm going to give a little bit of an account update while I'm at it. Alright, so lots of fun to be had. I've been enjoying Bloodline a lot. The progression definitely slows down after the first like day or two of burst, but then when the events come and I've if I've saved well, well, my account gets another burst, doesn't it? So um, I am on day, what, 11? 10? Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. Wait, where? Alright, um... Quests, achievements, logins, 12. 12 logins. So I am on day 12 as of this recording. My server just popped with a loom event. So I can, I know female loom is something I was interested in. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be doing any summons. Because I only have six. I honestly, I'm not going to lie. If there's an event I really want something for, I'm willing to maybe buy like one pack once. Of like 30 summons or something. But I don't want to go too crazy. But right now, when it comes to the rewards, um, there's definitely, I mean, there's some, you get five, five, five. I wouldn't want to summon unless I know I'm getting the companion, which of course I don't have anything for yet because we haven't had a chance to. Um, but in order to get female loom way down here, it's 200 summons. And I have some diamonds, but not that many diamonds. So I don't think that's something I will be doing. Um, let me know if you disagree. I'd love to hear. I'm going to ask for your guys' thoughts lots. I'm always happy to hear what people think and have like understand your strategies with play in these games. So if I think I could pull just for the sake of hoping I would get that champion, but I don't really think it's worth it. Although, I mean, to be fair, I did a bunch of summons um, on my first account that I used to test and play around with. And that account had the bug event, as I like to call them, the Bloom Clan. And I got a lot of copies, and I got a mythic of the, the male, which was amazing. I really wish I had him on this account. He was a ton of fun. Um, but yeah, I don't want to risk my summons. I want to wait until I have a guaranteed of something, at the very least. Uh, and this would only guarantee 20 summons would only guarantee me that. Would I, I could probably do 50 at best, maybe 70, which would still not even guarantee me the companion because it's 48, yeah. So definitely doesn't feel worth it for me this time around. I think I'll be holding on to stuff and waiting until, you know, I have a better chance. So that's kind of where I'm at with summoning situation. I'm kind of waiting to see what's going to be worthy. Um, arena challenge, I finished seventh. So yay, rewards, hey. Um, in the air challenge, I finished third. I blasted that pretty well, I think. I'm happy. And boom, more amazing rewards. So this is great. Good good way to replenish the resources I just spent while doing the air challenge because we have a calendar of events now. So I love that they did this. By the way, Bloodline, wonderful job with this calendar of events very happy for this so let me go ahead um let's talk about that first and then we'll talk about the patch notes so the calendar of events here i'm going to put that up on the screen we have this oh interesting they're showing this new character as well very beautiful all right so uh first off there's gonna be so what's today? Today is the 7th as of me recording this and probably post, I think I'm going to, yeah, posting today on the 7th. So coming up, on the 11th we're going to have a prize draw. I don't actually know what that means. Just, is it one of these events? Is there going to be something, is there something called a prize draw? I actually don't know. Um, speaking of which, I actually have some new events to do, yay! And then it looks like we're going to have an air challenge start on the 12th, which is funny because I just had an air challenge, so... I'm sure my resources are not going to be as stocked up. This is going to be a cross-server challenge. So this is fun. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this because I've been waiting for the idea of the marriage event. But I don't think marriage events pop onto our actual main servers um, individually in the normal challenges. Except for 
when it's a crossover challenge, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they changed it. But I, because I, mean, I saw an old listing of, of of challenges and how servers rotate, and marriage was not one of them. So, and I, the, the talk of marriages I heard was cross server. But let me know if I'm wrong, guys. Um, do the marriage events pop up within the normal like single server challenges or not? I don't think so. But it looks like April 19th, we're going to have a marriage challenge, which I have not done any marrying. I haven't done any for vigor or for trade swapping yet. But I am popping out some babies, guys. I am ready. I am popping out some babies. I have a whole ton of one stars ready to go look at i mean i have a whole ton of food period ready to go so i'm excited and the intimacy challenge will be next which is good because i really haven't done too much which the only bummer for this i think which maybe those who have had experience please let us know in the comments I have not done any cross server challenges yet. So for this intimacy event, are we going to go ahead and, um, or is that, is the cross server challenge, the reward so much better that it's worth focusing that instead of our main server challenge? Cause I'm going to have an int intimacy event again soon. I know it comes right back soon. So I don't think those are going to overlap. So I'm going to have to decide if I blow all my resources during my server challenge, because I know I have a good chance of ranking high, or do I save my resources for the intimacy event for April 22nd? Personally, I think if my intimacy event is soon, I'll just blow it all on my server because, um, well, we've got plenty of time to restock, right? Plenty of time. That's a while from now. And then after that, there's going to be another charm and district challenge that is cross server. So right now, that's what I'm in right now. I have a charm and district challenge. So for personally, for me on my account right now, um, districts, I already went through and started doing pretty good on. I blasted 27 million points already, upgrading a bunch of my districts and using a ton of my bread. Uh, charms, I have not done anything on. I kind of want to take a moment and make sure I choose the right champions to charm up or companions to charm but honestly i'm not quite sure like i was kind of focusing her because i was like oh yeah we're gonna get them up and i know they're good for the districts anyway and they do bring about more um entertainment yield so i went ahead and did that but was entertainment my right decision or would i be better off going something more production for something like bread right that's the yeah production so I have to decide which district I want to boost. If you guys have any strong opinions on that, which which companions are the best to charm, I'd love to hear. And I'm sure everyone is curious that are um, yeah newer players like that started with me. So always, always looking for your thoughts in the comments to help that as well. All right, let's go back to the activity up at the top though. So we have a new clan introduction and limited time events. The choir discord, wait, discordant, discordant. They spelled it. They sp have so many typos in this event calendar. Introduction is with an L, two S's in discordant, not one S down here. This is a hot mess, but yeah, anyway, at least they gave it to us. At least they gave it to us. There's going to be a new raid event called for the choir discordant. Uh, and then eye of abyss is coming back. The eye of abyss is a, is a boss event with the that'll pop up here in the main events tab and i know that that has been told to me that that's where our little travs or our female trav is gonna shine as a damage dealer against bosses so that'll be fun there's also gonna be an egg festival for the 13th so for me personally, that's more logical in Romania because Easter is actually not this weekend. It's next weekend for Romania. So that's fun. That's good. It's good. It'll be more like so most of the games I'm playing are doing Easter events now, but this one will be lined up with our Romanian Easter. So, well, I guess it's Orthodox or Orthodox. Anyway. All right. Then on to April 20th, we're going to have a catacomb <clears throat> event and then roulette. And Guardians of Defense, which I have Guardian Defense now up on my server. So at least I'll be prepared for when that comes back again. I'll have an idea of what it is. So most of these events I'm seeing for the very first time. So that's kind of fun. Uh, lots to get used to and check out. But all right. So besides the calendar of events, we also have patch notes. We have a long list of patch notes, guys. So let me get that up. 
All right, let's go through it. We have the new clan introduction event, limited time from the 13th to the 19th. Uh, the probability of getting them will be increased. Any favorability obtained from this event will be exclusively for that clan. There's our companions. We'll have to see how the trait will be for our companions. Uh, you'll be able to exchange any accumulated draws strictly for the choir companion favorability and mythic choir discordant champions. New raid event. Explore the story of choir discordant clan in their raid events. Oh yeah, that I noticed for uh, Wheel of... There's something here for Fates Unbroken for... Um, the Loom clan. Lume? Lume? There's going to be a prize draw. Players can purchase a prize draw ticket and get a unique number. 50 winners will be randomly selected out of all the lucky numbers on all servers to receive a Mythic Choir Discordant Champion selection chest. For other players, a great amount of diamonds will be granted as participation rewards. That's fun. I like that. Random free champions. That's really cool. I like it. Sounds fun. Uh, festival pass. The 13th to the 19th is going to be all festival eggs can be used to upgrade your battle pass level. Every level unlocked provides a generous reward. By unlocking all levels, you, let me, hold on, sorry guys. <laughs> By unlocking all levels, you'll get an epic choir discordant champion. Players can also pay to unlock additional rewards, including a mythic choir discordant champion. There's going to be a seven-day login for the event as well. If you log in every day for seven days, you'll get an epic champion for your ranks. Nice. And then during the event, you'll receive festive eggs used to earn other rewards by completing daily quests. And there'll be a top-up bonus, of course, as well. Um, adjustments and optimizations. Guild Conquest Tavern. Added reward chance statements. Added new background scenes. The unused mage coins will be retained by the end of the season. However, the unused relic horns will be converted into glories. I haven't done Guild Conquest yet. Obviously, my server's too new. <laughs> I'm excited, though. Curious. Curious, more like. Champion 3D model optimization. Okay. Optimize the card clan. Female Ignis. Female Yvnivian. Female Elsdith, uh, and oh, just the 3D models. Okay. Added 360 background scenes for all Dragonborn champions and Dark Elf champions. Very cool. I like it. I love the addition of better graphics because their graphics are fun in this game. They're actually quite nice. And it definitely really pops like to have them in the cool scene where you could spin them around. I know you guys like spinning those clowns around. Let's not talk about that one. <laughs> now, UI is optional to hide on the champion profile pages. I like that so that way we can take a screenshot as a content creator. I use those for my thumbnails sometimes, so appreciate it. <laughs> or people like to use those to make wallpapers for your computer. Computer. It's a vertical game. Wallpapers for your cell phone. <laughs> All right, resetting Guardian Stone is available now. Players can reset it with diamonds. Oh, this is great. That's very nice, Guardian Stone, because I'm working this like I would raid Shadow Legends, which is the right thing to do, I know. Um, instead of spreading out every little bit you get just based on what you get, it costs more and more each time. So, like, I'm waiting till for these, and I'm waiting for this to get to 500. I'm focusing on which characters I'm actually using the most, who's the most important on my account, and I'm pushing that one specific thing to help them up. So, for me, I'm now, I focused my mage because of female Ignis, and I figure that won't be bad if I get some fun champions like female or male Fulger in the future. Um, and then I also think I start getting, obviously this is now onto the blue ones. So what the green ones left, I started putting HP for my tanks because I figure you can't go wrong there. Uh, constitution, sorry. So this is going to be kind of how I play it. I'm not spreading, like I would never, in raid, I wouldn't do a little bit of everything. You would focus your core people. So that's kind of what I'm doing here too. And I think that is the best strategy. All right, we have a champion filter. Added two new filters, rarity and leadership. Oh, perfect. 
Okay. I, rarity. Actually, you know what I really wanted? That's not it. What was I... I wanted to be able to sort by type. That's okay, please, if you're listening, fix that. Let us sort for all of our rangers or all of our tanks. I want to see them all grouped together so we can, when we're new, it's helpful for new players to be able to analyze who do you have best in each category. I mean, right now, the best way to do that would probably be to go to your altar, because here we could at least sort, like, all right, who should I have as my tank? Let's see, what are my best tanks? Like, that's something you can kind of sort here, I guess, but... It's not, it'd be nice to have that in the champion section, too. All right, and then what do we got? Leadership, oh, right here. Guild Conquest titles. Players Guild Conquest title info will be displayed on leadership and chat pages. All right. And then bug fixes. Fixed an issue where the top-up is invalid under certain situations in the Treasure Compass event. Fix the ineffective bonus effects in Guild Raid. Fix the abnormal damage bonus of clan traits. Oh, here we go. So much for female Tidestorm having more damage when she's lower rarity, right? Uh-oh. Let me know, guys. Fix the abnormal damage bonus of clan traits for Doombringer, Tidestorm, Huntsdorf, and Nase clans. So... I don't know. I, I'm assuming that's what that means because last I knew it's better to use a low level female Tidestorm rarity, sorry, low rarity than it is to use a mythic rarity for most content, depending on what you're doing. But it's actually was more beneficial to use a low rarity. So maybe that's going to change. Fix the abnormal red dot even after runes have been reached for the max level. Fix the uh, number inconsistency between subtle damage and actual damage in Eyes of Abyss. Fix the disappeared equipment descriptions. And fix the wrong display issue when refreshing the challenge fund to another stage. All right, that's all for patch notes today. Ooh, alrighty. How are you guys doing? I'm still loving Bloodline, honestly. I am playing a lot of games right now, but Bloodline is definitely one I still look the most forward to. I'm really, really enjoying it. I mean, I kind of enjoy all the games, honestly. They all have their place, right? And this is really fun. I'm look I, I still have lots to figure out. I feel like I'm learning pretty well. Um, I'm constantly improving. I'm actually kind of mad at myself, but then I saw the... I don't think the might event is too soon. It's at least going to be a few days. I did my first fancy, fancy star here. Oh, man. My first fancy, 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 shiny star. What is that? Six? Oh, gosh. That's a lot. The stars in this game are crazy. It's so weird for me. Uh, but I guess it's not too bad, honestly. If I'm able to do this already, I still need a few more, obviously, but um, if I'm able to do this already, then I don't feel like it's too broken because I've only 12-day-old account, you know? And she's my core damage right now. She just is, so I'm working with it. But I will not take her all the way to 15 stars. That's the biggest thing, guys. Do not take a rare or epic or legendary to 15 stars even if they're your main damage dealer because you can no longer send them to improve their rarity which also will improve their inherited traits so don't take them all the way maxed out stars even if you're obsessively well patiently waiting i should say even if you're patiently waiting don't do that but all right it's been a long video sorry guys there was a lot to talk about though hope you appreciate this check-in i'm gonna always try to do patch notes videos when i can and check in plus it's fun to hear different opinions and i'm trying to give my insights as a player of other games and as a new player coming in with a different perspective so trying to constantly learn a lot but i'm having fun hope you guys are too and i'll see you in the next video